Hi, I'm Jeanette at Make Sweet Memories. I'm so glad you're here. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about tools, the kinds of tools that you use in your crafting projects. Creative Memories is known for their tools. They're sturdy, they last a long time, and they cut beautifully. But think about what types of tools you need. Think about when you take the most pictures. Do you vacation at a certain spot often? Then you would want tools that would help you create cute layers with that type of theme. Is it at a beach? Is it in the mountains? You know, think about that because you'll get a lot of use out of those kinds of tools. I love hearts. I love hearts in all different sizes and all different edges. And so I'm always looking for hearts. I also love scallops. So if there's something with the scallop, I always take a hard look at that. Do I already have something that works? Or could this be used with something else? Or do I just love the look of it? You know, all of those come into play when you're looking for the tools that you will really use. I have used a lot of different tools and I have a fair stash of them. You're probably like me, right? You love your tools, but it's important that you store them in a way that you can see what you have. That way you actually use what you have. I have put mine in the Stampin' Storage units and I have them bolted on a wall. Prior to that, I put them in cases, and so if a new tool came out, I'd have to unzip my case, go look at what I have, dig through drawers, dig through other cases because they didn't all fit in one case, and then decide if this was a tool that I would use or not, or maybe I already had something that was similar. So I have loved having my stamp and storage units I can see right away what I have. I can use my tool and put it back so that it's not cluttering up my workspace. So I highly recommend them. They are pricey, but I really feel like they are worth it. I have bought mine on sale. I didn't buy them all at once, just rewarded myself from time to time. But it's a wonderful feeling to have all your things organized and to be able to see right where they are. You need to know what tools you actually have. That will alleviate stress on you and just the headache of trying to plow through your stuff and figure out what you have so that you can use it. So find a way to keep your things visual and accessible. It will make a world of difference for you. Today, we're gonna to work on a Halloween border. I know, it's October, and we're gonna do some Halloween and some Thanksgiving and fallish ideas, and then we're gonna jump into Christmas. By the middle of October, Christmas is released. So I wanna make sure that we give each of these holidays its proper time. You can modify and use some of the products that you already have and just kind of use this as a formula. Anything works, okay? I'm just trying to use up some of my odds and ends. I don't have any more Halloween stickers, but I do have Halloween journal cards. I do have some scrap paper and some different things. So I wanna show you how you can make a quick and cute border using that fairgrounds punch. Okay, so I want you to kind of see where we're going here with this background piece. So this is one I made up quickly out of scraps and I'm gonna tweak it a little bit, but it gives you an idea of where we're going. And you see, this is the fairgrounds punch and it has this big Ferris wheel kind of thing right here, which is great for Disney or for fairgrounds. But we're just gonna clip right here and take that out. And then this looks more like 
a little village behind. Okay, so that's what I want to do. I just want to show you where we're going. I'm going to punch with this black cardstock. If you've never used the Creative Memories punches before, you'll want to watch my video on the craft punches so that you can get things lined up right. And just kind of move that over. Now it's not going to matter if the wheel gets a little bit cut off because we're going to cut the whole thing off anyway. But I'm punching up there at the top. Okay, so let's move that over and then I'll show you what I'm cutting off. I'm going to just cut right there like that and then flip on this angle and just kind of cut that. And now we lose the wheel and then I'm going to take off this little flag as well just by cutting right there on an angle. See the difference here? And it doesn't have to be straight. It kind of looks better if it's not, if it's kind of slopey, then it kind of looks uh, spooky, right? Like a spooky house in the back. So um, maybe it's easier if I go this way. Maybe I'll just do that on all of them and then come back and flip the other side. That'll work. So you see where I'm cutting here? I want you to be able to see, hmm, that's not the easiest way to see, but you'll get the idea when this little thing comes off there and we're going to cut here and they'll just fall off and this little flag needs to come off and then this round piece there to be a little more of an angle I think yeah so this is not perfect it's just gonna give us a little bit of a background and they don't have to all look the same so don't let yourself get hung up on that they're not all the same but we're just trimming it off. Okay, see how it looks just like a little background piece. That's what we're going for here. So I like doing this kind of thing because punches like this that you can use in multiple places are just a better value for you because you could use this for Disney you could use this for um, fairgrounds and you might not have known you can use it for Halloween too maybe even a Christmas village <laughs> kind of a Victorian feel in the background oops I gotta take off this guy that little flag there so now we have a piece that looks different, right? It's just that little, little bit of a eye line in the back. And I like that because that's going to work just great for being spooky, but not too scary. 
So what I thought I would do is add this ghost punch as well. So this is what I like about this, okay? Something bigger, taller, something smaller right here, different layers. And you can cut the bottom of your punch layer as long as you want to. So this to me looks like it's about two inches. Yeah, that's about two inches, that black. So I'm going to keep it longer so that I can add in another layer below it. I think it's really cute, but what I want you to be looking for is something that's a little taller and something that's a chain going this way. You could also use a laser border or a sticker if you wanted to. But when you have a few tools that work together, it just makes it fun to come up with some different borders. So I just wanted to show you so you could start thinking about what combinations can you create with the tools that you have. So that's something I always think about before I purchase a tool. What do I already have that kind of looks like that or don't I have anything that looks like that? And what do I have that could work with that? Is that worth it for me to purchase that tool? So I don't have every tool Creative Memories puts out. They put out new tools every month. But I do have, you know, a, a selection. And I do take pictures of my grandkids at Halloween. And so I'm kind of back in the Halloween vibe. I'm looking here to put all my castles on the number two line so I can kind of line them up. Okay, for some reason I'm a little off there. And then that, it's okay if it's a little bit different, but trying to get myself a good two inches here. So that I have a little bit of room for my um, for my ghost layer. So yeah, there we go. We're about two inches. That's good. Okay, let's take that. Alrighty. So the next layer I thought would look nice. I do have a little bit, if you watched my video from last week, remember I pieced this together so I could get a stripe. And I love stripes, so I like this, but we're going to need another color right in between to break these up. And so I was thinking about a purple, kind of a brighter purple. And we'll use some, some orange accents so we can bring all of those colors together. Okay, Creative Memories has a couple of different purples right now. They have a, the dual-toned purple, which is kind of fun. They have um, the grape, I want to say it's called Galactic, no, Gravity Grape. And then there's a berry kind of shimmer that would work with more muted tones. But I'm going to go with um, this bright purple. So I think this is our, our what did I just say? Gravity grape? Galactic grape? I can't remember. Gravity grape, I think it's called. Okay, and I'm going to make this strip about two and a quarter. Let's see if that's two. Maybe I should go two and a half. Let's see. I'd rather go a little big and trim it off than go too short. So let's see where we are here with this. Okay. Cute, right? 
It's already getting cuter, isn't it? You just need a nice color to separate the layers and I just love a stripe on the edge where you can just see a little bit. Creative Memories will purchase a certain amount of each tool and they expect those tools to last for six months. But sometimes they're really popular and they sell out before that. And so you just want to be aware of that. Usually when they're out, they're out and they don't reorder. But sometimes if there's something that goes really fast, they might reorder it. The thing is, you never know when. <laughs> sometimes they'll tell you, okay, that sold out in a week, we'll, we'll reorder that. But um, other times they just pop in. And like we just had those bring back border maker cartridges that were super popular. So you don't really know, but I would advise you if you really like something to get it sooner rather than later. And whenever anything goes on last chance, that means the inventory is low and they're going to run out and they're just giving you a heads up. Okay, this is your last chance to get it. So I know some of you may have missed out on the Fairgrounds Punch or the Ghost Border Maker cartridge. And I do have a few in my shop. If you're interested, just email me and let me know. But I think they're cute and I like that I can use this in multiple places. So let me just move into, there's my strip. And I like the little black and white edge. And then I need to do something with my ghost chain border maker cartridge. So I want to punch something with that. And you can use plain white cardstock. But I think it's fun if you have a little print of some sort. I don't know. I just think it adds a little bit of interest. So I'm going to grab my scraps from last week. And there is kind of a like spider webby paper. Yeah, here it is. This one. And I kind of like this. It it has some depth to it and those little distressing points and I like that so let's see I'm gonna need to go this way and when you punch it it just it just gives it a little fun layer to it you're not gonna see the cross lines but it kinda just goes light to dark and looks a little distressed. Oop, there we go. And I like the feel of that. The last one that I did um, was like a white with a thin gray stripe. That is super cute. But I'm all out of that. So I'm going to go with this strip right here. So you can see, I think, a little bit of the um, distressing on here, but I think that makes a cute layer. Look, oh, so cute, right? I like it, I like it a lot. Okay, and then we're gonna need to add in some other colors. What I did with this last time is I punched with my old uh, Creative memory circle punch one inch circles and just kind of placed them in the background and I think that's a cute effect so I thought alright I want to do that but can we make it cuter and I went looking for any die cuts that I might have that would make a small circle and I found this one. It's so perfect. It just has a little stitched edge to it. 
So you know how I feel about edges, right? I love cute edges. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do that and try it with, with these. And so I die cut these off camera. And what do you think? Can you tell there's a little stitched edge there? I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, but um, I like it. And I just think it elevates it a little bit. So I'm going to tuck one kind of down and then one a little bit higher. And then my highest one is going to be kind of in the middle where it's kind of positioned there. And then we're going to come back down again. Isn't that cute, you guys? It just adds a little bit of brightness to this whole thing. So see where we're going here? Let's see if I can lift it up so you can get a better look on the camera. Okay, so I think that's really cute and then we can accent with some orange and it's looking really good, right? So there are my layers here. So I know some of you may have a die cutting machine. I am pretty new to that and I am loving it. But a lot of you may not. And you may think, oh, I don't need that. And that's what I thought for a really long time. So um, what I'm going to do as a little perk for you, for anybody who wants to purchase the Fairgrounds Punch, I will die cut five of these little gold circles for you and pop them in the same package okay so that you can just see how cute it is to have a die cut circle just a little perk for you okay it doesn't take very long to cut those and i think they're darling so it'll be a little easier for you to see right up front okay and then I like how this is going, but I thought, what if I could find a paper that had these, the black, the white, the gold, some uh, of the purple and the pumpkinish color, like the orangey color. So I went looking in my stash and I found this striped paper. Okay, can you see? how just a little bit of this could be really, really cute and kind of bring in everything. So I have a couple options. I could actually put this, oh, it's not quite big enough, my scrap. I could put a little bit of that on the bottom if I wanted to. I kind of like that myself. What do you guys think? I, I do. So I think just a little bit. Hmm. What can I do here to make it fit? Or should I just leave off the black? Hmm. This is my question. <laughs> You just kind of have to play with it and see. Or maybe I could just use the black on the top and this on the bottom. What do you think of that? I have a piece. This is already cut. It looks like the Victorian edge. It is. And I think that could be really cute. This kind of has a little bit of that vibe. So I'm going to try just cutting a strip. And let's see. Maybe. About here. 
And let's see how that is. And we could tuck it under, or we might end up using that whole big thing. Let's see. Oops, this is not quite straight, I can see. It's bigger on one side than the other. All right, let's not use that then. Let's see if we put this on this. Maybe just a little bit is okay. Maybe I need to cut down my purple a tad. This is why I haven't attached them, because I just am trying to see what I want to do. So I'm going to try this with the Victorian blade. I don't know if you know, but the 12 inch trimmer has um, different blades that you can use with the trimmer. So I, I kind of like the feel of the Victorian blade. And I'm just going to line it up here so I know it's straight. It is on last chance. And I think this is the first blade that they've had on last chance. And I, I know they've talked about bringing in other blades, um, which is always fun. But if you like the Victorian look, then I would pay attention to that, that it's on last chance right now. Okay, let's see. Maybe I need this to be just a little bit. Let's try. I think I did it at two and a half, right? Yeah, let's go down to two and a quarter. Just see if that makes a difference in what we see. So here we go with our layers. And then let's put that. I like that. I think that's fun. And then let's put this layer. This is the fun part, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys like this? I like it. I think that's fun. And then we still have room for this and this. Yeah. Okay. I think that's cute. So let's start adhering things now so that they'll actually stick. And you can see what I'm doing. So I, I love stripes. They're just fun. And they just add so much, right? I like things that will just bring in all the colors. That's why I love florals too. Florals are fun. Or little mini dots that are different colors those are fun as well so let's put this where we can see it cute and then hmm, that might be to be a little bit lower I just think the the colors just kind of really elevate this and bring it to the next level. So I want you to be able to see it, but still see a little bit of your black stripe. So don't feel like your top reveal and your bottom reveal have to be exactly the same. They don't. They really don't. Okay. In fact, it's kind of more interesting if they don't. Okay. I'm going to slip this on. So I want the top of my castle to be kind of right there at the top of the purple. Maybe a little bit lower. So 
so you can see it. Yeah. Okay. And then let's put these in and just kind of tuck them in the back so that they gradually, here's my middle-ish piece. That's going to be the highest one right there. These little die-cut circles, they're cute you guys. I, I know, I'm a little late to the party. I kept telling myself, oh, I don't need those die cuts, but boy, I'm sure enjoying them. I just think they make everything fun because you just can get a little finished edge. Okay. And then this one, I'm just going to put it way over here going low. Okay. Look how cute that is. That turned out really cute, right? Now we need our ghosty layer. You know, I went through some of the things that I already had and I was looking for a laser border. And this is just more muted. It just needs to go with other muted paper. And I did have this spider web. You know, that could be a cute layer, but I feel like it just, it doesn't fit as well as my ghost layer. Right? I just feel like that just fills that space perfectly. So let me put this up here so I'm not getting adhesive all over everything. And I'm using repositionable tape, of course, that little dot tape. And, oh, these guys are cute. Just see the nice contrast here? Oh, I really like that. Okay, so now let me bring it up so you can see. Cute, right? It's getting cuter and cuter. And now I thought, okay, so I don't have stickers. I don't have any Halloween stickers. I've got laser borders, I've got papers, I've got tools. But what can I do here with a little bit of something? And so I went looking through scraps and I found some of this nice orange tone on tone. I love tone on tones. So they add a little interest without being distracting. So I cut a little strip and notched it. You can see on the edge here. And I thought, what if we did this, right? And then one thing that I love, love are these little word sentiments from the Totally Tonal stickers. You can see I use them all over. So if you don't have something like this, you can type out your own sentiment on white cardstock and put it in here. But um, good vibes only, that could be cute here. My little grandsons are into a little bit spooky, but not super creepy gross, right? They're just too little. And they don't like that. So, um, neither do I. Smile and say cheese. Could stick that on there. Or good vibes only. That's kind of cute. I think I'm going to do good vibes only. Okay. How do I want that? This is just right so that you see a little bit of the orange edge. Okay, good vibes only. And then I went, okay, what else do I have? What else do I have? And I found a vellum piece that said happy haunting, 
but I, I don't like the way that fits. It covers too much. So I don't want to do that. And I started thinking, okay, what else can I do? I found some of these black stickers. And I thought that would, they're a little bit bigger, taller, right? What if we did boo right here and spelled that out? So I'm going to take just a little bit of adhesive and put this down. Because look, my ghosts are happy, right? And then I'm going to find some foam squares. Here we go. And put my letters up so they're elevated. And I think that creates some interest here. So here's B O O. That's fast and easy, and it will kind of fit that space. Boop. It's kind of hard. They're sticky. So let's just put some on so that I don't have to chase these things around. Okay. And what's kind of nice is once they're on a foam square and before you take the bottom of that off, you can kind of decide how you want to place them. So I think this is really cute, you guys. This is much cuter than the other one that I did previously, where I was just using scraps and playing with the idea. This one has a lot more personality, don't you think? I do. I like it. Okay, so see what you can do without <laughs> Halloween stickers, right? I'm going to take this one off first and place it right there so I know we have space on the edge there. And then line up this one. These are sticky. So, like, once you're committed, ah, you're kind of committed. So, I want to make sure I'm lining it up right there. Needs to be a little taller. You know what I'm talking about, right? It has to be... <laughs> There's my orange. It has to line up, which is really a lot harder to do when you can't get your head in there under the camera. There we go. That's good. All right, and then my last one. Let me just put it right there. Oh, this one, I'm trying to keep my spacing the same. Right there, how about that? Okay. I think that looks really, really cute. And then my last little touch, I thought, okay, do I have any like enamel dots or hearts or, you know how I feel about hearts. Yeah, I don't know, something to go right here. And I went looking in my little envelopes here. I have the Beachy Tropical that I knew had some orange in it. So I could use one of these little dots there. 
or a purple. Ooh, the purple's cute too. Um, what else do I have? I have a star. Like you might not think, oh, tropical. It's going to have what I need for Halloween, right? But that can be cute too, the star. I don't have any. Oh, there's a purple star. Hmm. Okay, options there. And these are the primary colors. There's an orange. That could work too. Here's an orange. What do you guys think? Orange or purple? Hmm. The purple kind of stands out more, doesn't it? I think I'm going to go purple. Let's just take that off. Oh yeah. Right there. Good vibes only. Cute. Okay, here we go. Look at that cute little corner, right? See how fun that turned out. I'm really happy with that. So if you want a few more ideas for fall type things, last week we did a really cute uh, border with the bats and stars cartridge that turned out really cute and just added a few little strips and embellishments to that so I would probably do the same thing here I would find like an orange or black journal box and then maybe add a little strip of the um, stripe and maybe one of these or maybe this is where I put my star my orange star to kind of make a little companion piece but I think those turned out really cute if you like fallish ideas and you're looking for that then take a look at last week's video we did this and then we did a fall piece as well using the um, sunflower border maker not border maker sunflower border punch and I think this looks so cute layered look at that it's just fun if you have little scraps that have a, a pattern like a tone on tone paper that's really cute too but sunflowers are just so fall right my friend Pam Wynn created this idea where we took two leafy type laser borders that were already cut and then we put on foam squares two layers kind of a, a warmer brown and then the gold and then filled this in here with the brown and lifted it up and then put it on so that you can see put a little scalloped edge on you know how I feel about scallop right so cute so this is another generic kind of fallish idea um, I know it's the just the beginning of October but guess what by the middle of October the Christmas collections start coming out so I want to make sure that we give fall its due and that we have some cute ideas here to share with you that are fall based before we just jump into the Christmas stuff. So here's some cute ones. I do have my 30 days of gratitude class coming up and this is the little booklet that I'm using and you can order this on the Creative Memories website and it comes with the booklet and 
four stickers right here. And then I added these cute little white scalloped edge circles and this right here. But what we're going to do is prep it, get this ready, and then on each of these pages we'll take some ruled paper and put them in and then you'll be able to have a place to write something that you're grateful for every day in November. And it's kind of funny, but if it's cute, you want to write in it. You can leave the last page for a couple of Thanksgiving pictures if you want. You can do this however you want to. In the past, I've done it on two pages and put it in my album. But when I saw how cute this little booklet was, I thought, okay, I really want to do it in the booklet. And then I can slip it into an 8.5 by 11 sleeve and put that in my album. So that's my plan. You can do this however you want to do. The class itself is free. I have a limited number of kits available that I've prepared but it, you may even have some product at home that you can use. But I just highly encourage you to do something with your 30 days of gratitude. It honestly just changes your heart and helps you get ready for the holidays. So I absolutely love the class. It's free and you can work along with me prepping. On October 17th, I'll be doing the prep and then on November 1st, I will do the class live with you. So it just really is super fun. You might have the new rustic truck. That would be a really cute one. You know, it kind of looks like this little guy. Um, or the rustic fence. Those are all really cute as well. So take a look and see what you have. And just know we'll be prepping on the 17th. And if you order some product and you don't get it by then, it will be there and you can refer back to it. All right, well, friends, I hope you have enjoyed these ideas and they've kind of sparked you for some of your own fall pages. And if you want to stay connected, then you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you have questions, thoughts, or you've enjoyed this content, please let me know by commenting and giving me a heart so that YouTube knows. And that helps make this video easier to find. I'll be back next Thursday at 1 o'clock Pacific time. So have fun scrapping and reliving your own sweet memories. Bye everybody!